Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Not Your Average Josh back here for another movie review, and today I'm here to review the new DC movie Shazam Fury of the Gods, the sequel to the, of course, first movie Shazam that came out in 2019. But before I get into my movie review, I do want to say hit that like button, hit that comment button. That's very much appreciated. I love hearing feedback. If this is your first time watching any of my videos, hit that subscribe button as well. You can follow me on TikTok and you have me on Snapchat where I'll post content similar to this. But for the most part, my content will be here on this YouTube channel, Not Your Average Josh. So again, I appreciate all the support I do get. But let's get into this review of Shazam! Fury of the Gods. Shazam! Fury of the Gods is once again directed by David F. Sandberg and written by Henry Gayden, Chris Morgan, and Bill Parker, respectively. And this film continues the story of teenage Billy Batson, who along with his shazam -ily, must face a new foe in the likes of Calypso and Hespera. I did really enjoy the first Shazam movie, as I mentioned, that came out in 2019. It had a good balance of heart and fun, and I really did love Zachary Levi in the role of Shazam. Also Asher Angel, I believe, as Billy Batson. I loved just the dynamic, the, the balance between the, the, that character, I think. The character of Shazam and Billy, the whole Shazam in that movie, I thought was all very nice. I just had a blast with it. So going into this movie, of course, with everything going on with DC right now, the, the James Gunn starting his DCU, uh, I think this year is just going to be weird in general for the DC. You already had, of course, Black Adam came out last year, and of course that did not do nearly as well as it should have, especially with The Rock being uh, the main forefront there. And in terms of Black Adam, I, I liked it well enough. Th there was moments that, that, that were fine. It, it was very generic, just overall, just in the direction and the story, and I just didn't connect with it really on any level in terms of emotionally or anything like that. It was just a fun superhero to kind of put your eyes on for a couple hours, I think, ultimately. This movie, I think, is definitely a step up from Black Adam, but I do think overall it's not quite on the level of the first one for me. I will get into kind of more of my negatives, but I just really do actually want to start out with mostly my positives here on this review. Zachary Levi, he, I think, was a little better in the first one, but overall I think he is very fun in this movie. Uh, I think the, the moments that moments that he does falter, I was saying I was going to go full positive, and I'm already getting into a little negative, but the moments where I think where he does falter is, and I've already seen this kind of mentioned elsewhere, I think he does play a, a younger version of Billy Batson than it is in this movie. Uh, when you see this movie, Billy Batson has grown up. He is almost about to be 18 now, and his uh, just, I don't know, the Zachary Levi was playing, it seemed like still kind of an immature a version of Billy Batson, and I thought, it just it didn't make quite sense because Billy was a little more mature. The moments you do have with him in this movie, which I think were a little too few, to be honest, he is very much with his own struggle, a more mature struggle than uh, the character that Zachary Levi is giving off of Shazam, if that makes sense. I don't know. It's kind of a little complicated in my explanation there, but I just thought I didn't feel the connection of the two characters as much in this. They felt like two separate characters, whereas in the first one, they felt more like combined and connected if that makes sense. Just on a, a general level, Zachary Levi was really good in this movie. He still brought that charisma and, and, and had some funny lines throughout. I thought it was a hit and miss at times, but most comedy is, if we're being honest. In terms of the shazam the adult version I connected with more definitely in this movie. Kind of the same way with Billy Batson. You didn't really get to hang out with the younger versions of these kids as much in this movie. I think that's one element that really took away from the heart of the first movie. You know, in the first one, you had Billy Batson really dealing with way more of a personal struggle, dealing with the fact that he came from a foster home and trying to find his mom and his family and, 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 and then just learning to accept the family he had. And that was really what that first one was about as a whole. Whereas this one, it's much more bombastic and about these two villains that you get in this movie. I will get into, I really did enjoy them for the most part. There was just that heart missing from this and it just kind of, it felt more like a generic superhero movie which is not what you want this to feel like. That's what made the first one so different, and that's really where I think my negative slash mixed reactions mostly lie in that area. Adam Brody, who plays the, uh, obviously, superhero version of Freddy. You have Ross Butler, who plays the superhero version of Eugene. You have also DJ Catrona, who, play, who plays Pedro as a superhero. He is kind of very limited, to be honest. I will say, I'd say even Ross Butler is fairly limited in this movie, even as the superhero version of himself. I felt like we could have spent more time, honestly, as a whole with the whole Shazam Lee, if I'm being completely honest, and that's including the parents, which I say uh, the parents, they, they were fine. Again, they were good. They had little funny moments, but they're really just designated to just hanging out at home, watching TV, and then at the very end, driving them around to try and get to a location near the end of the movie. And it was a little ridiculous, I will say. 
they do this in superhero movies, the whole suspension of disbelief in terms of people knowing whether or not their kids or family members are superheroes. And in terms of the parents, like you have all these kids living here, this whole Shazamily has all of a sudden just uh, started to happen in your city. They keep Shazamming inside the house. So there keeps ending up being this huge hole in the house. And the, and the dad is like saying, oh man, it's, it's, it's lightning strike. I'm telling you, lightning strike. And at first you're thinking, oh, he's just covering for the kids. But they make it seem like in the movie, like they don't know that these that they're superheroes. And so in the end, when they reveal it to them, it just kind of was like, what? Come on. How did you guys not know? Especially with the hole constantly being in the ceiling. I thought you were covering for him. It just, that part just didn't make sense. It's like, why would they even, they should have, why would they even go that direction? They should have made it to where they knew they're superheroes now. It just would have added, their, their dynamic would have brought them closer more. They could have had more to do. I just thought this, the parents were relegated to virtually not doing much in this movie. I did think Grace Carolyn Curry was honestly one of the standouts in terms of the adult, the kids, you know, their superhero versions. She was really fun in this. Uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, she played the same character too. As she played herself as a superhero and as the kid because she's not a kid anymore. She, her character is in college, so it made sense. It made her character way more connected. Whereas all the other kids, when they were superheroes, I just felt like they were a little different in a way. Definitely Grace did the best job of playing her version of Mary because she was the same person. She, you know, it wasn't two different actors playing. So that whole dynamic was a little shaky at times. There was still some fun to be had. There was a great bridge scene, action scene that felt like a very classic superhero family, like Fantastic Four X-Men team up fight where they were all executing their own powers and they all had something to do in the fight I, I really did enjoy the execution of that i would be remiss to say megan good also she honestly i think played the best uh, older adult version of herself where it felt like she was the same person of course she plays the, the adult version of darla who i think she's really good as well but honestly a lot of the kids were just relegated to not doing much in this movie as well including billy batson as i mentioned which again, that's really my main gripe. In terms of the action in this movie though, I think it, it is very well done for the most part. There are moments where you notice the CGI, never too jarring or anything, but there's moments where you notice it, but for the most part, it's executed very well. It all was very smooth for the most part. Another thing though, that kind of turns into kind of a negative for me, I will say in this movie is the unicorns. Uh, look. <laughs> There's unicorns in this movie, if you haven't seen this movie yet, and I like the design of the unicorns. I like how they, they make a little different style with it, make them more of a godlike animal, I guess you will say, this mythical animal where it, it's not all colorful and nice and pretty like you know, unicorns are usually portrayed as. It's more of a mean, um, rugged animal that is very dark and uh, very cool looking. It's very cool upon the look and the design of them. Well, then they do this very silly thing, and this isn't spoiling much, no real spoiler alert here. Nothing to do with the plot. The, the unicorns are running up, uh, and they look. it looks like it's all pissed off. This one unicorn towards Darla, the, the younger version of Darla. The unicorn's running up to her, and looking all pissed off, she pulls out Skittles. Literally Skittles, I think even the bag. I think even was the actual bag. And then she literally throws the Skittles up for the unicorn to have and says, taste the rainbow. And I'm telling you, it literally, for me, that just felt like the most like obvious at in a movie i think i may have ever seen and it just took me completely out like taste the rainbow really like i get the comedy of it but it's just like such a i don't know it's just so ridiculous it just took me out of that whole sequence and now when i think of those unicorns it did some kind of cool things within uh battling and stuff but uh, that's just really what i think of now that was just more of a personal gripe i had is like if you're gonna do an ad you don't have to make it that obvious in terms of the villains though <laughs> helen mirren lucy Liu, as i mentioned lucy Liu playing calypso helen mirren playing hespera they were both i think really good in this helen mirren definitely playing that whole shakespearean side of the character very dramatic the way she uses her dialogue the, the writing and just her performance i felt like she was very into her role and she was really going for it i felt like if she had half-assed it it wouldn't have worked as well but honestly i really bought into it for the most part and also lucy Liu really plays into the comic book side of her character, just that very villainous. Just felt like straight off the comic book, honestly, just with some of the things she was saying, was very, definitely over dramatic at times and over the top. For the most part, it worked again for her character. So honestly, in terms of their characters, I think I really did appreciate them for the most part. There is a level that comes off very generic and their, their whole plot, really, it's just very kind of basic. They feel like, you know, because they're gods that uh, Shazam and his family should not have this power. They stole the power from their father and whatnot. And so it was a very kind of basic idea there. There's not really much to it. They're just coming to take their power back. And that's really the, the whole idea here. In terms of Rachel Zegler as Anthea, I was very mixed overall with her character. I, I, I thought as an actress, she did a really good job in this movie. 
I just think with the writing of her character and the execution, I was very confused at where she was at in this movie. Shazam, you've mentioned at one point, she's also a goddess in this movie that is sisters, I guess, with Espera and Calypso. That honestly was a little weird in and of its own, the whole dynamic there. They didn't seem like sisters, didn't look like sisters, and I get their goddesses or whatever, but it, it was a little weird. I didn't quite vibe with them being sisters. But in terms of Rachel Zegler, this whole movie, she's playing both sides. And we're first introduced to her as a normal girl. We don't know that she's with Hespera and Calypso. She just shows up in the high school and starts to befriend a little more than befriend uh, Jack Dylan Grazer's character, Freddie. And from the minute she was introduced, I knew there was something off about her character. And maybe that's what they were trying to do. They wanted the audience to kind of be keyed into that. She spends a, kind of more an extended period of time pretending like she's just a, a, a classmate with Freddie. And... She is just so over the top, not only nice, but like this perfect character who's just so into Freddy. And Freddy's this kid who gets bullied all the time. And it was just laid on so thick that immediately as soon as she was introduced, I knew she couldn't just be a student here. Like there's something to her character. I thought she might have been Lucy Liu's character. Uh, Calypso maybe disguises this girl. But then, of course, it turns out that she's working with them. And then for the rest of the movie, she just keeps playing both sides. And it was honestly very confusing. Like you can do that in a way that's interesting where you get where she's coming from. Oh, there's a reason why she keeps going back and forth. but. This whole time, I mean, uh, Calypso is just going so over the top and she just continues to just push the, the pedal to the metal at becoming the most villainous by the end of this movie where even uh, where it just gets crazy. But Rachel Zegler's character, Anthea, I never, I never understood why she was going back to her sisters when she would go to Freddy if she seemed like she was so into Freddy and they really commit to her actually caring for Freddy, which I don't know. It just I, I never quite knew where her character stood. And so I was always just very mixed on her as a whole, just her her involvement in the movie. Her powers though, I thought were really cool. They, they definitely could have utilized them way more. They felt kind of very Doctor Strange at times, but again, they just very utilize them, not very much. And she doesn't really ever seem to actually seem like she stands a chance between the other two ladies. And so I was a little like, okay, so how powerful is she? And then when you get to Freddy's character, look, I thought overall, Freddy was better in this movie than he was in the first one. Jack Dylan Grazer acting, I think was on par in both, but I think just in terms of his character, he has more to do in this movie, and I think that at times is a detriment to Billy Batson's character. But nonetheless, he, he does do better in this. I like the connection he has with Anthea, his connection. It, it's more understandable. And he does have some very emotional moments in the end also with Billy, and I do like where his character went overall. I also have to mention that I really did enjoy uh, Jimon Honsu. I'm not sure if that's how you say it. I definitely probably butchered that name, but he did such a good job in this movie as Wizard. He definitely is a lot more with the comedy in this movie, I will say. At times, it can feel a little over the top in terms of his character. I enjoyed every line that he had. Like, he, he was just such a nice breath of fresh air for any scene that was starting to feel uh, maybe a little stagnant or something. He had some funny lines, especially his connection with Freddy. I thought that was maybe my favorite connection in this whole movie, honestly. They had a great chemistry that I was not expecting. Wizard would say some funny ass shit to something Freddy says. They were locked in a cell for a while. They really build this kind of close almost companionship in a way they really spend a lot of time with each other in this movie and i thought it was actually a great idea once you get to the third act of this movie it does just turn into a very generic superhero movie i don't have the emotional draw that i had in the first movie you have uh billy Eshazam going up against them a lot of the other kids their superpowers throughout this movie are taken away and then they come back there's a lot of, of influx with that so in the end you just have shazam basically facing off with uh mainly calypso's character without spoiling anything and again, there, there's a lot of beautiful colors. <laughs> it's a great action set that they have at the end of this movie. It just, I didn't feel the emotion there, even when it gets to the point where they're, you know, they're definitely trying to draw the emotion out of the audience. I just wasn't all the way there on it. I just, I wasn't as uh, connected with this movie. But it, it was still fun in the end, and where they end up going, I will be very interested in with the Shazam character and the, the Shazam Lee as a whole, again, without spoiling anything. If you're tuned in at all, this movie is looking like it's going to be very underwhelming at the box office for this opening weekend. And I think that is definitely probably going to put the nail in the coffin on the Shazam character. And that is very disappointing for me because I, it was a nice, fun, interesting character to bring in. I know James Gunn has a bunch of other characters that he's going to focus on now, and it's not going to be that big of a deal once we get two years into this James Gunn thing. We're not really even going to be thinking about it, except, oh yeah, those Shazam moves were pretty good. Zachary Levi was a good, he was a good choice for that, but just didn't quite turn out to anything much more. We do have a couple post-credit scenes for this movie, and one of them felt like a sketch that also is set up, but just the comedy was a little, a little off with it. It felt very, uh, 
very pushed. Like it, it felt very uh, forced, I will say. You have one last credit scene that felt very like, okay, I guess we're shooting for anything now, uh, just in hopes. They were just like, fuck it, let's just go for it. Overall, uh, I had good time with this movie. Um, for the most part, there, there was moments that were better than others. The connection overall just, I think, was not there. That heartwarming, uh, that heartfelt emotion that was in the first one, the good balance that it had. And then even the comedy wasn't quite as good, I think, in this one. I think this one was just a little bit more of a watered-down version of the first one. And I think they go a little bomb, too bombastic at times and focusing on that, where you just lose the character that, that is Billy Batson and Shazam. The, their, their connectivity again so uh, that is really where my main qualms are and also my main positive as well i would give this a recommendation i do think this is a good time at the theaters although again as the box office is looking doesn't look like many people are going to see this movie especially i mean this is just a big stacked month i mean you got john wick 4 coming out this next week of course you already had scream 6 come out creed 3 come out earlier this month it's just a, a pretty busy month in terms of movies coming out that people want to see so I think this movie just honestly may uh, end up getting the brunt of the, 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 the short end of the stick, I think, with this. That is my main thoughts. I'm going to give Shazam! Fury of the Gods a 6.5 out of 10. I still think you'll have a fun time in the theater with this one. I just think this uh, will probably end up being a send-off for Shazam. In terms of him having his own movie. I think he might be involved and they kind of hint at that in ways. I will also say there is a cameo in this movie and people are saying they spoiled it in the TV ads. I'm not sure. I'm not going to say what it is. I thought it was fine. <laughs> it, it was cool. It was nice to see, I guess. Um, yeah, I like the character. Pretty good. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's my main thoughts on that. But I want to hear what you guys think. Um, have you seen this movie? Do you not give a shit about this movie? Are you more of a Marvel person? Are you a DC person? Y'all care about comic books in general. Whatever the fuck you think. <laughs> Leave your comments down below. I appreciate hearing anything. I just love the uh, back and forth with any comments that I get. Uh, just talking about movies. I love the different perspectives that people have. That's the thing I love about movies the most. Hit that like button. As I said, leave a comment. If this is your first time watching any of my videos, that is much appreciated. And also hit that subscribe button, though, if you are here. That is also much appreciated. You can follow me on TikTok. You can get me on Snapchat, where I post content similar to this. But for the most part, my content will be here on this YouTube channel, Not Your Average Josh. So again, I appreciate all the support I do get. Thank you for tuning in. Be looking for more videos very soon, and I will talk to you guys later.